Hey beautiful people! Today's tutorial is on how to use Google Scholar to explore a topic and to find the associated literature and articles. So let's get started. If you're new here and are interested in academic tutorials, quick tech tips to make your life easier, an academic vlog and so much more, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell button beside it to get notified of my new videos. By the end of this tutorial, you will know how to explore the Google Scholar interface and to search for articles using the simple and advanced search tools. You will also learn how to create a search string on any topic of your choice and knowing how to create a search string is transferable to other databases. You will also learn how to explore the results and to keep track of new results as they come in after you've performed the search. Let's get started. To use Google Scholar, you just search for Google Scholar in Google and you it will return this option which you can click on and then it leads you to this front page of Scholar. Google Scholar has introduced this front page, which provides recommended articles based on what you've been searching. And they also use the keywords on your profile to determine some recommended articles you might be interested in. Also, they've provided a section on the front page where you can find articles on COVID-19 if you're interested. And these are some of the top journals for publishing scientific literature on these, this topic. And so you can click on one of them or all of them and find the articles you're looking for. This is where you perform a simple search. So you can type in a search and it will return the results on a new page. Let's explore the top left corner. So when you click on these three dashes, you have your profile, which takes you to your personal profile if you, if you are logged into Google. It will show your papers, your affiliations, and you can edit it. And it's very important because most people refer to your Google Scholar page when they are looking for your academic um, profile. On your left, you have um, people you have co-authored papers with. Let's return to the home page. I'll come back to the three dashes. You have your library. In your library, you save papers. So if you search in Google and you find a paper you like, you can save it and it will be stored here and you can always come back to it. So we'll explore this interface a bit more later on. On the left, you can trash some of the articles if you don't need them. You can look at your trash, whichever ones you've deleted since you, you placed them there. You can add labels to your articles. So you can create a label and attach um, them to certain articles. You can look at your, your saved articles in a date range. And when you come to the top, you can, you can click on an article and edit its citation. So if you think that uh, there's something not right with the article or the article citation, you can correct it yourself by clicking on the, the checkbox to the left and editing it. By checking it, you can also delete it or you can export it as a citation and you can check by, you can label it with a label of your choice. On the left, sorry, on the right, you can visit the web page to find the article and you can click on it. You can visit the author's profiles and many of the other functions you can perform on the search page. And so that's the library for you. Now, Google Scholar has something called an alert, and it's not only for Google Scholar. Most databases have alerts. Alerts are how you keep track of new literature after you've let, left the database. So when you search for something, you can save it as an alert, and anytime a new paper appears, it gets sent to your email. It's one of my favorite features of Google Scholar. The fourth thing here is metrics. In metrics, you have journals ranked according to several categories and so it's a good place to start if you're looking for journals for your your new article when you click on the categories the drop down button you can explore the many different fields and the journals that appear in them and even the sub fields 
and so it's a good place to start if you're looking for journals or the list of journals in your particular field. Back again to the three dashes. In the settings, you can change a few things. You can ask Google Scholar to always return patents. You search for something to include um, case law if you're into law and how many results you want to display on your front page and whether you want the results to be displayed on a new browser window when you click on it. You can also ask it to show citation and quotation links, which we'll talk about when we are exploring the results. You can change the language or you can add um, other languages and you can add your school's library. So they tell you, for example, Harvard. If we search for Harvard, You can, if you search for Harvard, it appears here, then you can click on it. And if you are if you are part of the Harvard library and you search for an article or you are on the Harvard network, you may get access to a lot more downloadable PDFs. So if, if that's what you want to do, you click on save. Here you can deal with the details of your account. And also you can download a Google Scholar extension, which will appear as an extension on your browser and you can use it to do a quick search and anytime you click on it it appears as a window like this and you can quickly type in a search um, string and return the results so that's that's it for the top left corner there are three ways to search in google scholar in fact there are two the first is the simple search and that results when you type into the search bar and you press enter or the search button and it returns the results on a new page. Now the second option is split into two. That's the advanced search using the search bar or the advanced search using the user interface. So let's start with the simple search. We, we are going to explore the topic of the impact of climate change on pregnancy. So I just type the simple search in, um, in the search bar. I press enter and it returns this result. This is 188k results and it's not easy to explore. That's basically because we're using a simple search. We are assuming that Google Scholar understands us the way we would speak to another human being. But that's not Google, how Google Scholar works. We could have um, simplified this a bit more to reduce the search results. But let's move on to um, the advanced search. So basically the, the basic search or simple search is used for a first glance at a topic to see how much literature you could get. And this results could contain information on pregnancy in humans, animals, and a lot of things. So you would want to be um, a bit more specific. So there are many building blocks to building an advanced search. So the first I want to talk about is the quotation marks. You use the quotation marks to tell Google Scholar that you want those words to appear side by side and not separately in an article. So if I simply search for climate change, it's going to return a lot of articles. This is about 3.6 million results. And that's because Google Scholar understands me saying, I it can either return papers that have climate in them and change in them, but they don't have to stand next to each other. Now, to compare this, let's add quotation marks and search. You see the results have been reduced to 2.3 million. And that's because this time around, I'm telling Google Scholar that it should return the results of papers that have climate change standing together as a topic in the paper. And so that's the first building block, the quotation marks. The second building block is the Boolean. Boolean examples of Booleans are the AND operator and the OR operator. You use Booleans to combine search terms together. So if we go back to our original topic of the impacts of climate change on pregnancy, what we are going to do is to split the question into topics. So now we have impact, climate change and pregnancy. Now, remember that I told you that if I do this, then it's going to return climate and change in separate papers, but we don't want that. So we want climate change to be a topic or um, 
an exact phrase. So we are putting that in quotation marks. Hence, we've simplified the top um, the set string into an advanced set string which uses booleans, which are combined by an AND. So what this set string implies is that for every article that Google Scholar is going to search in, it should only return the result if that paper has the word impact and climate change and pregnancy all in that same paper. If we click on search, it returns 48k results. Now we can make the search even a bit more specific. So for example, we are not only looking for preg all, all pregnancy papers, but we are only looking for those in humans. So we are going to add on another topic to make it more specific. So when we search, our results reduce a bit further. So that's how you build um, advanced searches in, in Google Scholar or most other search engines. You keep building or adding on topics to make them more specific. And so the OR operator then comes into play. You can make the topic more specific by adding synonyms or to expand on the search so that you find other papers that do not fit into this search string because currently we are being very specific. So to do that, we introduce the OR operators as synonyms. So we introduce synonyms for each of the words if we know the literature specific context. So for impact, we could look for um, influence or effects. And those words could be used in a, in a paper. If we look at pregnancy, an alternative for pregnancy in a paper could be gestation. And for humans, maybe we're not just looking for only humans, but we're looking for females. And so we'll introduce the all operator as a synonym to humans and introduce females or young females or teenagers or something that makes our search more a bit more expansive. And so now the results we are returning are a lot more specific than if what we started out with. And so now we're looking for any paper that has either impact, influence or effect and climate change and pregnancy. And that's, um, that topic should be on humans or females or young females or teenagers. And so that's what the search string means. Google Scholar will evaluate each term in the bracket first before it comes to evaluate what is outside of the bracket. And so from start to finish, we've built on how to build an advanced search from scratch by splitting the, the topic we are searching for into smaller topics and combining them with booleans. And in that search string, if we have exact phrases like climate change or teenage pregnancy or some other term, then you would want to put it in quotation marks to make Google Scholar understand that you want them to stand together as a topic in the paper and not separately. This is how an advanced search is built using the search bar. This same search can be performed with the advanced search option. If you click on the three dashes to the left and click on advanced search, you can perform your search here very similar to what we did with the search bar. In the first option, they ask for you to find all articles with all of the words. And so you indicate what words you're looking for. And then with an exact phrase, so climate change was an exact phrase in our search. Hence, we will put it here and with at least one of the words. So at least one of the words could be impact, effect, and the other options without the words is one which eliminates all papers that have a certain word in it. I don't really recommend using this option because sometimes it takes out papers that you're interested in using. As much as possible, do not use this option. Also here you can specify if Google Scholar should search for um, these options in the whole of the article or in, only in the title. And if you want um, Google Scholar to only return papers by a specific author, and if it's only published in a certain journal. 
and also you can specify the year range. So that is the advanced search for you. Now, when the results are returned, it pr presents to you this page. In the next section, we'll explore how to look at the results and find what you're looking for. When you search for something in Google Scholar, it returns the results ranked according to something it calls relevance. And relevance has, it takes a lot of factors into consideration. It takes into account the author's ranking and the number of references linked to that particular article and the ranking of the journal, which I showed you earlier on when we're exploring the interface. And the highest citations often come on top, but not always. So if you go through this, you realize that the first result has 102 citations and the second has 64, but the second is ahead of the third, which is which has 134 um, citations. That shows you that Google Scholar uses a multifaceted kind of algorithm to rank the papers and not always will the most cited papers appear on top. Also, you want to tread cautiously when you are using citation as the only metric to identify a good paper because papers get cited for the wrong reasons sometimes. And so it's up to you to use your judgment to determine if a paper is right for you. And so that's how Google Scholar returns the results. Now let's explore the results of the Google Scholar search interface. So when you search for articles, it presents it in this form. To your left, you have the filters, to the middle, you have the papers, and to the right, you have the PDF sources. Let's start from the left. On the left, you have the year filter. You can search for results since a certain year, or you can provide a custom range. So if I say 2015 to 2020, and I click on search, now the results have been reduced to only the results that appear between 2015 and 2020. You can sort the results by date. So if you click on sort by date, you are presented with this. And if you click on everything, then now you have the results going down from 2020 all the way to the last article. Let's go back to relevance. You can exclude patents and citations, and that will reduce your search results even further. In the middle is the details of the paper. So you have the title of the paper, the authors, the abstract, and a few buttons here. We will explore them one by one. This is the title. If you right click on, on it and open it, it takes you to the source of the article. Most of the times it's the journal's website and you can find the PDF version which you can down, download. But all that depends on the network you're on. You can click on the name of the author and visit their profile. This star here means you can save the result. So if I click on it, it will get saved to my library. So if you keep track of the name of the title and we go to my library, you'll see it's the topmost result that has been saved there. So that's the star. These two um, quotation marks show you how the paper can be cited. So you can download them straight into your reference manager, Ref, RefWex, RefMan, EndNote, BibTech, or you can copy it and paste it into any other citation manager you're using. So that's this one. Now the cited by refers to all the papers that have cited this paper. So when you click on it, it will lead you to a page with 102 papers that have cited this particular paper. Now this is where you begin to find the niche. It, it draws you into a smaller niche of very related papers that are probably talking about the same topic. And this is where you begin to find the articles that you're looking for. And if you like a certain paper, you can also go deep into the papers that cited that paper. And so you, you realize that it begins to be a black hole of results. And that's how you begin to delve into the niche of the topic you're looking for. That is the main core of the message I wanted to present in this tutorial, that you use the search results, those who cited the search results, and here you have the related articles, which also tell you papers that have been written on the same topic 
and Google Scholar deems them to be related. They could be older or newer. It doesn't matter, but Google Scholar determines that these papers are related. Now, the last one captures the versions of the article as they became available online. So sometimes an article is available in various places on ResearchGate, on LinkedIn and all of that. So Google Scholar draws all of that in and saves it under that main title. But if you want to cite the article, I would advise you use this option rather than using any of the options under the three versions. Now to the right, you have the PDF versions or the links to the article. That also depends on your network. And so if you're on a school network that allows you to have access to a lot of PDFs of papers, then you, you will be presented with a lot of options here to download the papers. Now we've searched for results and we have a number of results we could look at. But how do we keep track of new results as they come in? We don't always have to come back to Google Scholar to search for these results, do we? Do we always have to come and search? No, we don't. Google Scholar and Scopus and Web of Science and other databases have a feature called an outlet. And you can find the one for Google Scholar on the left by clicking on Create Alert. When you click on that, it presents you with this interface. What the alert does is to ask for your email address. And so you provide that and it takes your most recent search string into account. You can always change it. You can always create one if you want to. Now what this does is to send in new results as they would appear if you were to search for it on another, um, on another day. And so 20 days from now, if I were to return to Google Scholar to search with this search string, whatever results would have appeared between now and 20 days from now would have been presented to me in my email if I had created a Google Scholar alert. And it's a very powerful feature, especially when you're writing literature reviews and you want to keep track of the, um, the literature as they come in. And so you'd want to um, try this if you don't already do it and also for other databases. And you can comment in the comment section about your experience with it. But, but personally, it's one of my favorite features when it comes to these databases. So try it. It's not only with search strings that you can create an alert. You can create an alert also by following specific authors. So if, for instance, I love this paper and I love the author of this paper, I can click on the link here and it will lead me to their Google Scholar page. You remember in the beginning, I talked about the Google um, Scholar profile and how it's important when people want to look you up. Now, if I visit this person's page, I can click on the follow button. And when I click on the follow, it will ask me if I want to receive uh, alerts on their new articles or new citations or new articles that are related to their work. Now, that's how you get to follow people in a specific niche. You can even follow their co-authors. And if you want to delve and learn more about a person and their work, this is a very good place to, to start with. You can also view their own articles from the past and their citations. And you can sort that by year and the year they were cited. And there's a lot to explore on a person's Google Scholar profile. So when you follow the person, it gets added to your uh, Google Scholar alerts and you can find the list of all your alerts on your profile. And so that's the second way you can look at alerts. And so we come to the end of this tutorial. I am hoping that I've showed you or taken you on a tour through the Google Scholar interface and have introduced you to the nitty gritty aspects of Google Scholar that you probably have seen or have forgotten about or never knew about. We've talked about the simple search, the advanced search using Booleans and the other building blocks and the advanced search using the user interface. I've told you about Google Scholar profiles where you can learn more about authors and I've told you about this very powerful feature called the alert, which you can use to keep track of recent literature appear in the database. And so I'm hoping that this will help someone out there who is either new to Google Scholar or is advanced but wants to refresh their knowledge on it. And so I hope you go out there, use Google Scholar to the best of your ability and comment in the comment section. If you like this video, 
just share it with your friends like the video comment and if you've not already done so please subscribe thank you for watching and see you next time as we delve into another topic bye